with our grand prize and there are plenty of prizes in between but we are getting close to starting the celeste run so i'll let you guys find that via the links below the stream all right speed of which we are in fact ready so i'm going to throw it over to yp here for celeste yeah cool okay so uh, yeah this is celeste it's a video game released recently you probably heard of it you climb a mountain it's pretty good uh on the couch um uh, xenops yeah, he's a cool guy. He uh, played the game casually, <laughs> so you know he knows a lot about the run. I know everything about this game, in and out. Yo, I got you. I'll fill in the blanks. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, I probably won't be talking too too much because this game is kind of like you have to concentrate a lot, so it's hard to yeah. speak and whatnot. I'll try to fill in the gaps where I can with some minor tech that I know. Cool, cool. Okay, so yeah, I'm ready. Count down. Okay, so five, four, three, two. One, let's jam. <laughs> so yeah, uh, to start off, this is the prologue. You're gonna see me jumping a bunch. I'm doing it pretty poorly right now, but jumping slightly faster. So yeah, nothing too interesting here. You can kind of tell how much faster jumping is because the music's supposed to sync up with this scripted sequence. And it's supposed to end right when we jump off this, but because we're jumping, the music's slightly off. And here we're about to die, but the bird's like, yo, you can dash. So we learn how to dash. Uh, you're going to be seeing that used a lot from here on out. It's going to be the main form of movement, various mechanics revolving around the dash. And we basically know everything in the game now because there's only dashing, jumping, and climbing. But the stuff we can do with these mechanics, pretty interesting. So. So you're only supposed to be able to dash once, but if you stay on the ground long enough, you can keep the speed from the dash and get your dash back. You're going to see me use that a bunch, hopefully. What I did there was called a huge or a wall bounce, or there's many different names. The community hasn't really decided upon one. I call it a huge, so I'm going to be referring to it as that. But basically, if you do an up dash against a wall, you keep the upwards momentum, and it's fast. I'm partial to wall kick myself. <laughs> Yeah, you can also do it across screens. You're gonna see me do it, or you're gonna see me try to do it there. I failed. It's bad. The video game. Yeah. That was one right there where you're able to dash across the screen, and it always resets your dash during the transition. So there's actually even certain intended uses of that in some secrets of the run, or not the run, but of like a normal casual playthrough. So yeah, I guess I should mention the main form of movement I'm doing is called a hyper. So you see me doing down right dashes into the ground or down left, depending on which direction I have to go. Basically, dashing into the ground makes you go a lot faster. That's all you really need to know. Also there, I did a trick called neutral jumps. And when you're up against a wall, if you're neutral on the D-pad when you're jumping off a wall for like a wall jump, you can keep jumping against the wall to gain height. So it eliminates the need to worry about your stamina. So kind of useful there. So this level is going to introduce the mechanics of Dream Blocks. You're only going to see it here. This game likes to introduce a mechanic and get rid of it for the next level. Until a certain level, but we'll get to that later. So yeah, this is just mostly movement stuff right now. And here, if I do an up... <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so what I did there was I activated the cutscene in the air, and it stores my Y coordinate, so I was in the block, and it resets my dash. It saves a bit of time, but I did the wrong direction and dashed into the wall, so you know, go me. And how dream blocks work, they're pretty self-explanatory. Dash into them, come out the other side. They will lock your direction to the direction you dash to, so yeah, that can make it a little tricky sometimes. Nice. This is the uh, escape sequence of Chapter 2, and this is uh, the... Uh, Badalyn, as <laughs> she's colloquially referred to, which she'll actually work like Shadow Mario or like Ray, uh, Dark Rayman and stuff, where she'll follow your movements exactly, just a hair behind you. Yeah, here there's going to be this kind of risky 
strat involving bad balloons. Just go under her. There. You have to it's a sure. lot harder than it looks. <laughs> yeah. And you might notice it, and may, might not, but when he's falling down the longer distances, he's holding down to get the fast fall. You can kind of see Madeline like shrink and become basically a piece of spaghetti. So yeah. Also, I should mention here when we do a bunny hop. So basically, what bunny hops are, yeah, if you jump with a bunch of speed, you keep it when you jump. There's not much to explain, but it lets you get more height off your jumps because when you're doing a hyper normally, you can't get much height because you're holding down. Yeah, there's also a thing called a super dash that gives you more height but less speed, and that has a few minor uses as well throughout the run. And with that, that wraps up chapter two. Also, there's an in-game timer. We usually go off in-game time. It's not active right now, and I'm not going to turn it on because lazy. I don't want to see how bad I'm doing. <laughs> but, you know, it's good to know that if you have a bad computer or whatever, or you're running on console, you're on an even playing field. Loads don't really matter. So this is chapter three, Celestial Resort. There's a bunch of dust bunnies, these red guys. They're kind of mean. You're going to see them a bunch in this level. This level is very cycle heavy, so I'm probably not going to be able to explain too, too much. Oh yeah, I picked up a strawberry there. Strawberries aren't important at all. But you can collect them if you want to be cool. Sadly, I don't like being cool, so I'm not going to collect them this round. And that one was a winged strawberry. If you dash in a room, you can't get it. Very important to note for any percent, because, you know, we don't get those. Pretty kind of cool. Some of these walls too, you'll see have these little like, little feeler looking things on them. And basically what those means is that you can only touch that ground or that surface once. And then out on the next time that you try to touch it, there'll actually be, be these, uh, you know, these black and red spots that will damage you. Yeah. And casually, it can be pretty annoying if you're taking your time trying to like, jump up and down on different walls, trying to just be slow and casual about it. but. It starts to teach you to go a bit faster. So I want to take this uh, moment to shout out Sex Rex. Uh, he's he's a great guy. He was the one who play tested this game along with a few other people, but you know, he's Sex Rex. And uh, I'm gonna shout him out a bunch because you know he's cool. <laughs> no other reason. Oh yeah, so that was like a corner jump. That's my least favorite room because it makes me. Spike jumps make me angry because they're, they're hard. In every other game, every other type of game that has those Mega Man games specifically, they're a lot harder. And in this, it's at least noticeably easier to do. Yeah, so there's a few pixels under the spikes where you can just jump off it. Only on those vertical or horizontals. I don't What spikes are those? Vertical, yeah. <laughs> we're good, we're good. <laughs> You're basically like getting a. Uh, like a wall jump right off the corner because you can pass through spikes in this game if you're not going like the direction the spikes are facing basically or counter to that direction so yeah here i'm just hitting a bunch of gel books i don't know we're cleaning up this guy's house resort hotel whatever because uh, it's a mess if you've noticed like, look at all this dust it's disgusting hi theo bye theo <laughs> I yeah. love this chapter because of like all of the crazy cycles you can make with hypers and everything. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm gonna go for one here and probably miss it. <laughs> That's one way to miss it. <laughs> Once he dies in a room, the cycle is actually slightly different because you have a spawn location instead of like falling from the loading transition, so that usually can affect it. So yeah, now we cleaned up his mansion hotel, and it's like, cool. And here's an elevator. Honestly, I don't remember the story that well. It's been a while since I've seen it. So, you know, giving my impression of it. You're trying to get to the presidential suite, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
These, I don't even know if we ever mentioned it, but these little like crystals refund your dash. Yeah. They also refresh your grip meter, like your kind of internal system that like says how long you can hold on to a wall. And uh, that can potentially be useful as well. He's also going to grab a key in this next room after doing some really slick movement and then immediately die because that will actually keep the key and then put him back at the other spawn location. Yeah, we do that once more. There's only two instances of death abuse in this run, so you know. Ideally, in an optimal run, you'll only die twice. I don't believe there's been a deathless run yet, but Teach's current PB slash world record has only one unintentional death. And you guys have been trading that back and forth like crazy, right? Yeah. Also best music right here. Oh yeah, so this is Oshiro. He's been the guy we've been talking to this whole time, but now he's mad at us, so go. Yeah. He's gonna try and eat us. And this is probably the hardest part of the whole level, because of the crazy amounts of cycles you can make. The drums though, dude. Wow, I actually hadn't seen that one before, that was cool. the longest room in the escape as well and one of the most difficult yeah the two hyper at the very start kind of difficult but i got him so you know that was a good room that was real good because i know how fast paced this is i'm gonna jump in with some donations hundred dollars from hat kid that says hi my name is hat kid i like riding scooters fast making things go boop and wearing all the sunglasses if you don't like it you can get lost also, $5 from Wonder J that says, Hey, Yoshi, thanks for answering my question yesterday about Pink Floyd and Glover. My question today is, would Kanye West speedrun Celeste? Good luck, man. Of course he would. He'd do all hearts. He'd do Hondo. He'd make his own category. He'd do 114%. Dude, I like full clear. I've been working on a full clear category. I think it's super cool. Ooh, full clear would be cool. Yeah. I want to do all the other categories, but I kind of can't now because I need to catch up on 90% <laughs> more and more. <laughs> Slowly falling behind. All right, somehow we have a $10 donation from YP. <laughs> I, it says, if you and or any friends are looking to run Goof Troop, I can give paid speed lessons starting at $35 an hour to help teach you the entire game, which I am an expert in. It's true. I am pretty good at Goof Troop, so if you do want to learn it, hit me up. Thank you. And $50 from Ramen W that simply says, great stream, guys. Celeste is a blast. And now I'll stop talking over chapter four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, this chapter has a bunch of bubbles, a bunch of clouds. The dash jumps and doing off clouds are kind of finicky because to get the maximum height off the cloud, you need to like stay on it for a little bit. You also have to time the dash accordingly so you get your whatever back. Your dash back. <laughs> time your dash to get your dash back. You know? It's good commentary. Yeah, basically there's like a very short but existing cooldown from when you dash to before you can dash again and you need to have touched the ground after that cooldown so generally that just means you have to be on the ground for long enough oh yeah i didn't auto scroll or skip there you saw me against that block that block gives you a bit of extra speed which is just enough to clear that gap saves a bit of time and looks really cool so you know now he's doing the hypers like from a jumping position on those small little blocks. It's really hard. <laughs> that was good. Okay, so yeah, uh, here's the second auto scroller. It's the hardest part of the run because I've died multiple times here on. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would like to do a huge here. You don't need to because, you know, you wait here for a while, but I like going for it. And uh, a lot of the time I die going for it, so I should probably stop going for it. So, you know, if you ever see me go for that again, please tell me not to. Were you, like, it. setting up to, like, make a big joke about how you have to wait on that cycle anyways and then you die? <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> but, you know. This room's cool, though. You actually, like, kind of skip a half a wind cycle there by doing the creative movement. Yeah. And this is the last section. It's pretty good because you know a bunch of hardcore wind coming at you 
live. It's great. These snowballs that are flying through the air will actually spawn at a posi at Madeline's position on their like set timer, and then they'll travel in a straight line. So you're, they're entirely controllable, and they can actually refresh your dash if you bounce on them. He's also activating all these bubbles early by pressing the dash button. Yeah, normally they go off after like half a second, but if you press dash, they go off right when you press dash. You're good. Slightly faster. Yeah, and that's Golden Ridge. It's one of the hardest levels to get down consistently because of all the wind and how the clouds work. It's really awkward when you start out, but when you get good at it, it feels really good to execute it well. We got $20 from Breakdown. It says, good luck, YP. Play the video game like a mad lad. Donation to <laughs> Runner's Choice. Bless. There's only, like, one left, isn't there? One yeah, uh, that or the bid war. I'll just put it towards the last incentive. We've got to meet All that. All right, sounds good. We're getting really close on that one, actually. This area is really cool because the platforms are bound to your dash and will move when you dash. And it, it adds for a lot of quick tech and movement through a lot of areas you're actually supposed to move like two rooms away for that section there but uh yoshi was able to skip using like a hyper on that da that swap block which is really difficult to do this chapter is also all about like finding you know keys for these doors and there are actually several key skips that were intended by the developers and one that was found by them and left in intentionally yeah, there's a pretty epic key skip coming up right here that if you've 100% of the game, you know what it is <laughs> because you actually need to do this for one of the hundo. I so thought this was a shortcut, like, while we were all spamming runs of this game at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it turns out there's actually a reason for that being there. But I won't spoil it because, you know, spoilers aren't good, even though you're watching a run of the video game. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. That cycle's a little tight to make, so that was nice. Yeah, so coming up, we're gonna go into this mirror, and then a bunch of stuff's gonna happen, and the world's basically gonna fall apart. So uh, here we see Madeline, that's our character, and uh, I'm gonna control this fish, cacodemon, whatever. <laughs> He's kind of hard to control, but if you do, don't balk into a wall, basically, you're good. He's um, a beholder, dude. I like fish, cacodemon better, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> So yeah, here's battling again. So you know stuff's gonna happen pretty fast. So the rest of the level is gonna have a bunch of those fish, demon, beholders, seekers. There's so many names for them that you know. Yeah, so now here's where the game kind of introduces the red bubbles and the swap blocks a lot more, you know, frequently with each other, which makes it a lot more difficult. And here's these switches. They can hit the switches, so you're gonna see me get them to hit a few switches, because you know, it's faster than me going out of my way to hit them. Like the snowballs, these enemies will go based on your position, but they will not, they're not like in a direct line. They'll actually kind of like swoop. And they can break these red blocks, which is kind of important there. There's a slightly faster strap, but like, this trap better because I can actually do it. <laughs> so that's the end of that little challenge room, bite size, whatever section. Now it's coming up, probably the biggest skip in the game, like single skip. So normally you need to get two keys so you can ride a bubble all the way through this area, but using a reverse dash jump, you can just clear it like that. Nice. You are seeing him get a lot of momentum from this uh, swap block here because you can actually do a hyper off of any kind of moving platform and carry even more speed. That'll be important as well in the next chapter. So here the switch is actually behind this block. And that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> this is the worst one, man. <laughs> 
my visual cue is kind of messed up because I'm not used to this monitor, but that's no excuse for this because <laughs> this is like actually really easy once you get it down. At least when you've done it like hundreds and hundreds of times like I have. Oh yeah, and here's Theo again. We actually have to do stuff with him now. Yeah. So You can throw him and he acts like as if you're dashing into those buttons. And you can hold on to him and do it at the same time, but when you're holding on to him, you can't dash. So this area can be really finicky, but there's quite a bit of... Uh, you can dash and grab onto him at the same time. I'm not exactly sure how it works. I haven't been able to get it myself, so I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. there's quite a bit of fast movement. With so basically, I'm chucking him, and then I'm dashing into him and grabbing him again in midair. I keep some of my speed. And then like that, you just fly through that room. Watching optimized Theo movement always just makes me like, <laughs> like just roll back. What a disaster. Okay, I'll just do this normally. Oh, or not. He's trying to skip the uh, swap block there because it's just a little bit faster, but it's a lot harder. So there's two ways to go in through this room. If you did it casually, you probably went to the bottom because... Figuring out you can go on the top is kind of difficult. I didn't even know you could until I saw other people going for it. But yeah, slightly faster. And be attack a giant eyeball, and all is good. All right, $10 from Sex Rex says, wins shuriken or gift runs? Uh, probably tomorrow, actually. <laughs> and a dollar from upcoming Celeste God says, Celeste, the best a man can get. Also, go for door skip or Angraval will be mad. <laughs> Is that the chapter seven one? Is that what he said? Yeah. About? Yeah, that's great. Hundred dollars from Ron Cly as well or Ron Cle. It's just I'm just here for the hey yas. Hey ya. Uh. Um so in this section you're steering the with the feather, but it's actually way easier to steer with the thumbstick and it also is faster for some reason. I'm not exactly sure. It's because you have full range. Yeah. And but in overall just it's based on the position you're holding the stick rather than like changing the direction with left and right on the d-pad so it, it becomes a lot easier to move through a lot of these sections yo these are the kevin blocks uh shout outs to kevin at power up audio makes the noise for them and they are based on which whichever side you hit them from uh, the fact that that's like one of the most costly deaths in this run by the way it's pretty crazy but uh whenever, whatever side you hit them from uh those blocks they'll actually move in that direction as you might have guessed, so there's a lot of very kind of fast optimizations you can do. So coming up here, I'm going to be doing more neutral jumps. I mentioned them a lot earlier on, but here you'll see them more prominently. Shout out to the Sex Rex for uh, playing the sub one. Shout out to the Sex Rex for having sub one and donating. <laughs> oh, nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty good too. Hardest room in the game, for him. These walls break with a dash, as you can tell, but it's harder to tell that like you can actually refresh your dash pretty quickly by making sure they bounce you back into the ground. And taking the upper route here is slightly faster. Doesn't the task like take slightly different routes? Probably. This chapter. I don't remember. I've only seen task like once in passing, and that was like an older version of the task. So, you know, I'm not a true speedrunner. Not watching every task. Some H. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to mention here. <laughs> it's kind of self-explanatory. These feathers make you fly. These bounces make you bounce. Complex level. This is probably the hardest level in the run for me. Currently, I'm like really bad at this level, at least compared to the other levels. But, you know, I was going decently well. There hasn't been too many major mistakes here. So there's a few dev intended skips here. 
doing that second one makes it so I don't hit the checkpoint, which didn't matter, but that can cost up to like 10, 15 seconds. While underwater, you can dash as you know quickly as possible. And uh, they actually planned on having some larger underwater levels in this game. And then they said underwater levels suck in every game and they decided to remove them. <laughs> Smart. So uh, this is the boss fight of the game. It's a pretty good boss. With pretty jamming music. You're just trying to hug yourself to death, man. Basically. Yeah. Casually, this boss fight takes forever because you get to like certain points and then you're thinking, all right, I've been doing this for a while. This boss has got to be dead. And then it's still like three times as long. So. Yeah, but but it, it, it they really put in a lot of like movement using the bouncing and really made it a good mechanic area of its own. Yeah, a bunch of falling blocks. A bunch of stuff changes or changes every time you hit battling. So it's always somewhat interesting. Tiny cycle skip there. Surprisingly, the lasers, which seem kind of like the more deadly thing, are often the easier thing to avoid than like the little orbs that Battalion shoots. Yeah, the orbs can really mess you up, especially on a room coming up somewhat soon. So here we're going to try and do a hyper jump into this next room, so I can skip that bumper at the bottom. Actually got it, so you know, that's pretty good. Nice. Place to die. You can barely make the cycle here, you can just hold right and jump. Dash accordingly. Yeah, like the section right here where you're using her to stay afloat, it, it's, it's really cool how they tied a lot of the movement in to this game. Okay, so that's like the main part of the fight. Now I was going to introduce moving blocks for a little bit, but you know, we're not mountain climbers, so. That's the best piece of dialogue in the game. I'd be upset if I didn't mention it. I love that one. That's good. Yeah, being able to hyper there, just right under that, works so perfectly. So yeah, here's the last room of the fight. There's a specific cycle I want to make here. Let's see if I can make it. Okay, we got it. That's a bit closer. Than yeah, like. sketchy when the the feather, like the last feather, made it hard. Yeah. So now we uh got a new hair dye, <laughs> new yeah. hairstyle, and that just. What happens is Madeline and Battleline made up after that long ordeal, and now we get an extra dash because Battleline's helping us out. Leveled up, man. It's a level two run. <laughs> level two. Heck yeah, finally. But the whole thing was we fell down the mountain, now we have to climb all the way back up. Yeah, there used to be a cutscene, but you could do a save and quit and skip like 15 seconds of gameplay, and it was really dumb, so they patched it out. It's sad because it was a really good cutscene. All right, I'm going to rapid fire a few donations here as we get to the end because this run goes fast. Yeah. 2531 from True Journal says, and so we shall equip sunglasses. That helps us meet that final incentive, so thank you very much. I also got $20 from Voodle that says, hey, YP, big fan. You're an alpha gamer. I inspire to be just like you, but I can't because you haven't bought me Celeste yet. Feels bad, man. $10 from Sexrex again says, hey, streamer, why does Celeste's hair keep changing colors? And hey, we just kind of went over that, so that's pretty convenient. And twenty-six dollars from anonymous with no comment. We thank you for your generosity to direct relief. So uh, yeah, this is summit. 
We have two dashes now because, you know, the fight is our last level. So basically, we have to go through every level we did, like tiny sections of it, that are designed specifically with the second dash in mind. Second dash is pretty cool because we can refresh our dash on our second dash. So we get three dashes, in essence. Especially if we do that, you know, it's just <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start. Very good start to summit. So yeah, there's a bunch of like really cool movement you can do here. Yeah, as, as he mentioned, these are all like themed to each chapter. So the first one was actually chapter six because that's where you just were. Now chapter one will progress through the rest of them. Done with the chapter one section, on to the chapter two. Oh yeah, I should mention, so out of dream blocks, you can actually jump out of the block. If you're, you can even do a double jump out of the block, kind of, if you're mashing jump enough. You won't see it too, too much, but it's really important for a skip coming up in this room, actually. At the very end, you'll see what I mean if I jump out of it. That lets you skip the spring on the left. And that's actually a mechanic that the game teaches you through some of the post-game content, which is something that's really cool to me. Yeah, all the movements, or not, maybe not all of it, but most of it is explained actually in the post-game stuff. So, nice. It's a good mistake. Whenever you see one of these rooms that has like the purple orb that has battle in there, that's the final room of that like section, that chap chapter. So that's the end of chapter two. Yeah, I'm not sure how that works actually, because isn't or isn't Battlein the one who gives us the second dash? So if she's like not with us, how do we have two dashes? Still? Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. She's pulling her weight. She's got to carry you around. Nice, I didn't die 15 times on this room like earlier. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst one. <laughs> but I died on this room, so you know, not all is good. Play it safe. So normally you have to hit that switch down there, which I somehow didn't. But you don't, you don't actually need to. This only works with this block you see that I was holding on to. But uh, if you die, the cycle's all messed, because like we mentioned earlier different cycles if you die and now instead of going to the right he's going to go back inside through that like secret passage because there's a convenient doorway there yeah basically an all red berries run basically so is there even a berry in there <laughs> there is a berry at the bottom well yeah but i meant in like the passage the hallway i might not i don't, I don't know i don't pay attention to that room <laughs> So we're back at Golden Ridge. Neat little skip here, yeah. Skip's having to like go back and forth the room transitions to refresh your dash. Okay. This one great. This room isn't hard, but at the same time it's very hard, so you know. That's like the one red berry that you'll potentially pick up throughout the run. Which is not slower in game time, but technically is slower RTA. Yeah, so you know, I'm losing those frames. Wanna go overestimate because of one berry? Yep. You can get that berry too, but no, I wanna go fast. And then do you go for this skip here? Yeah. That's a really tight jump, and then you have to do another one of those wall kicks to skip to the end since you don't have the auto scroller platform. There's a tiny cool skip I wanna go for here. I don't know who found it, I wanna say Teach. I saw he was the one doing it in runs first, but might not have been. Nice. But you can skip the very last bit of that vertical auto scrolling. Speedy. Mm -hmm. 
this is the final room of like the chapter four section and they put this jump here like where that final one where if you don't dash early or if you don't wait then you're gonna dash right into spikes and it's the <laughs> worst move ever <laughs> it's the best dude i died there so many times when i was first playing the game just because i was like waiting to get to the peak yeah it's great they knew what they were doing with that one i guarantee it yeah this is actually the last revisit section of the level the temple again it's also where the another set of spike jumps right there and the second death abuse comes in so uh, I'm gonna go for a trick coming up very soon it's in the next next room called door skip uh, it's a great skip. If you don't go for it, you're bad. If you don't get it, you're bad, so I'm bad. <laughs> it's easy, man. Super easy. Not hard at all. Okay, I'm not going to go for it again. <laughs> Twice is enough. But yeah, you can go under both doors, and it saves like a second. And everyone's always talking about how it's like the next big strat, but you know. I'm not sold. I don't believe in the door skip yet. am I doing? Okay, we're good. So yeah, now we're like approaching the very peak of the mountain, you know, the actual summit, so, you know. There's gonna be these flags, there are checkpoints, there's not gonna be a whole lot of screen transitions from here on out, there's a few still, like this one. But uh, the flags act as checkpoints, and they count down. So, you know, when we get to one, we're basically done. Also sick music time. Mm -hmm. Best music. Oh man, chapter three escape. Sorry dude, you're wrong. <laughs> Agree to disagree. So a lot of these checkpoints he's not skipping, like not necessarily because of safety or anything, but just because he needs to refresh his dash. But like this example, for this, this checkpoint for example is one he can skip. Also, if it wasn't obvious, the like wind that's pushing down uh, implies that the gravity is actually heavier in this area. Yeah, so a lot of jumps that would normally be really easy are a lot tougher. Yeah, and now the gravity's moving upwards because you got an updraft. Or rather, the gravity is lighter. Doing horizontal dashes like that is like crazy precise. So. Okay, we're good. It's really easy to die there. And I'm not used to this monitor or this resolution or anything, so I was really scared I was gonna die on that up part. And I missed that. Nice. Somehow jumped over it. I didn't even know you could do that, actually. New strat. And now, like an upcoming checkpoint, he's going to be able to skip, but it won't actually. It won't actually matter that he skips it. The next checkpoint. It's the best skip in the run. What are you talking about? It matters so much that I get it. At that. Yeah, even if you die, it just sends you right back to them. <laughs> so yeah, if you notice, we're at like the last few flags, which means the run's almost over. We've almost done it. Okay, <laughs> I was pretty sure I jumped into those spikes. Yeah. 
that that spot usually you're supposed to dash through on each of the left and right there, but I believe you can make those as jumps, at least one of them. Yeah, you can make yeah. the first one. You can make both actually. It's just oh, really wow. hard for the second one. Right. And get ready on time. Up, yeah. yeah. Time. <laughs> 3923 RTA. <laughs> Yikes. Oh well. I still sub 40 RTA. So yeah, let's see how many times I died. Because you can do that actually in the epilogue. So yeah, we got to the top mountain, we got to chill at the top. Now we're our boys, Theo and the grandma. Hi, Sex Rex. <laughs> Shout out to Sex Rex one last time. Only died 42 times. So yeah, 35.58 in game time. You see, there it is. Two strawberries. Not too, too bad, I guess. Could have been worse. So yeah, that's the last. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say. So. Well, that was great. Thank you, Yoshi Pro. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, that, let's let's give him one more round of applause. All right, that was an awesome Celeste run. <laughs> All right, we're gonna be getting things ready for the next run now, which is going to be a hat in time, being run by Chocrit. And in the meantime, we're gonna go to a quick little Twitch ad, and this is actually gonna be my final uh, hosting shift for the marathon, folks. So thanks very much for putting up with my voice 